Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and I'm here to talk to you about fixes for the blue screen of death. That's where your computer crashes and you've got that blue screen behind you, which shows an error message, and then you've got an issue. And hopefully your machine reboots. Now I want to try and show some fixes that you can potentially use for this. Now unfortunately it's very difficult to give you a definitive fix, and you'll soon find that if you Google around there's loads of different suggestions on things to do and they're all sort of classic turn it off and on again mentality in in various different ways and some of them aren't very helpful so i'm going to quickly summarize those before i go into the ones that i have found that are useful so usually you'd get things like remove all your usb devices and that means unplugging your mouse your keyboard your headset your microphone and anything else that you've got plugged into your pc now this will be useful if your devices are new so if you've plugged in a new device and then suddenly your pc is blue screening a lot that could well be the issue so it is worth trying that if you're using new hardware in that way external hardware that is causing an issue another one is that it could be a down to a driver conflict so you've got a new driver for a piece of hardware same sort of issue it could be a graphics driver or it could be some other driver and that is then causing a the problem which is then causing a the blue screen of death so it could be that so you might want to roll back your graphics driver or roll back that driver uninstall it again it's really nondescript and not very useful but it is one of those things so it could be that or it could be a windows update that's caused the problem or a lack of windows updates so it is worth checking for a windows update that might well help Another one is that it could be a drive is failing. I'm going to show you a fix for that in a minute. So that's worth checking out. So those tips aren't terribly helpful. But what I'm going to show you now is some that perhaps are. Before you get started following these, though, I'd recommend taking a look at the stop error that you're getting with your blue screen. So if you're able to see it when your computer crashes, hopefully you get enough time before it restarts again, where you can see the stop code at the bottom. Usually it's a QR code that you can scan if you're quick enough with your phone, but also more importantly and easy to grab usually is the stop code. So it'll say stop code, something like memory management, failure, critical process died or something along those lines make a note of what that is and then if you google that particular error you may well find a specific fix for that problem that will save you going through each and every one of the different blue screen error fixes that i'm about to show you and all the other ones that are out there as well and hopefully will fix your problem a little bit faster sometimes the error is a bit vague though, and it might not be helpful. So now I'm going to show you some other things. One of the pieces of hardware that can cause you problems is RAM, especially DDR5 RAM, which can be problematic in some instances. Now, installing it wrong can also be a problem. So make sure you've installed your RAM in slots A2 and B2, which is the second slot in and the fourth slot. If you're using two sticks, this is really important. Otherwise, it won't run properly and it won't run at the right speeds. Then hit delete to go into your BIOS when you've finished building your PC and make sure XMP is turned on. Now, XMP itself can be pretty unstable on Intel builds sometimes, and this can lead to problems as well. But it's worth doing a mem test. So on Azus motherboards, you've got memtest86, which is a tool that's pre-installed that allows you to run tests on your RAM to see if there's any issues with your sticks. Now this could be useful to make sure everything's as it should be. And if you do see any errors, then you can RMA that RAM and potentially get it fixed that way. It's also possible to download memtest86 and put it on a stick and use it separately on other boards. And I've done a guide on how to test your RAM and make sure everything's working properly that I'll link to in the description. Another thing that can cause blue screen errors is corrupted files and windows. So if you hit your Windows Start button and search for Command Prompt, right click that and click Run as Administrator. Then when the command prompt is open, what we need to do is type SFC slash scan now, and that will scan through your system. This is a system file checker that looks for corrupted files in your Windows system files and then fixes them. It goes through a validation process that takes a little bit of time and then hopefully will fix any problematic files and solve your blue screen error. Now this is one really easy and simple fix that's worth running. There's no guarantees that it will solve your problem, but if it does, it will be pretty simple and straightforward and won't take much time at all. And it's one of several fixes you can use command prompt for. 
Command prompt can also be used for another system checkup, which is also checking for corrupt system files. And this is DISM online cleanup image check health. Now I'm going to leave all of these lines of code in the description so that you can use them and just copy and paste them into command prompt and make life easier for you. But this one checks the health of your current system and make sure everything's right. And there's also slash restore health, which we'll look for and then fix any errors and any problems in this. If you use this alongside SFC scan now, this should then help to make sure any corrupt system files are sorted out and repaired and validated so that Windows is working properly and as expected. Now it's worth running through both of these and making sure they all work correctly. As well as system files corrupting and causing problems, it may well be that your drive itself has gone wrong or has issues with it. Now in command prompt, you can use the command chkdsk, which is check disk, to scan your drive and see if there are any problems with it at a hardware level that can then be fixed within Windows. Now naturally, this won't work if your drive is failing and needs replacing, but it should help find any issues with the drive that can be fixed aside from the system file scan that we've already done. If you combine these two scans, it should hopefully find any problems with your hardware and software that can be fixed by Windows itself and sort out any blue screen errors that you might have there. Now, this command can also be done slightly differently. So you can do chkdsk and then slash r. What this does is it tells Windows to find the problems and repair them. So you can see that sometimes you might get a warning message saying it can't be done right now. You have to do it when the system restarts. If you press Y, it will then go through the scans when you're booting up your machine next time and then hopefully find out and fix any problems. Now this does take quite some time in order to do this and it will be slower on older drives like SSDs and hard disk drives versus NVMe for example but it is worth going through that process of doing it. It's also worth noting quickly that a lot of these commands will be more successful if you boot into Windows safe mode before you do them. You can do them in Windows directly but safe mode might give you better results so if you find this isn't working then try doing it in safe mode instead before you go through this process. Another way to check on your drives is quite simply within Windows, right click on the drive, click on properties, go to tools, and then go to error checking. You can then click to scan the drive and if any errors are found, you can then go about fixing them. This isn't quite as in depth, but as you can see, it will go through it and scan the drive for any problems and then fix them. Obviously, you could do this for each of the drives on your system if you've got multiple drives, and hopefully that will resolve any errors that you find on there. Another worthwhile thing to do is to check for Windows updates. Press the Start button and type Update, then Check for Updates, and click into Windows Update and click the Check Update button, then Download and install any updates that are available. If there are loads, make sure you wait for them all to install. Now you may well want to consider updating your BIOS as well. This is a bit of an undertaking and it will require you to know the name of your motherboard and then head over to the motherboard manufacturer's website and find the latest BIOS. But you may find that the latest BIOS includes improvements for system stability, memory, compatibility and more. Usually you have to download that BIOS into a USB stick, then boot into your BIOS by pressing delete and then going into something like an easy flash utility like Asus's that you can see here, selecting the BIOS from your USB stick and then updating it. Now this is a bit more tricky because using BIOS updates can result in you bricking your system if you don't know what you're doing. You have to be very careful and very patient not to power down your system during the install process. You obviously also have to pick a BIOS that matches your motherboard and you can see, you can see what the current BIOS version is in the BIOS and then also the BIOS version that you're going to be using Make sure that obviously you're using the newer one and that you're installing that carefully as you go through. There are different processes for different motherboards, but it's generally the same. Generally, you need to download and extract the BIOS files onto a USB stick, put it into your PC, go into your BIOS, and then use the flash utility. Or alternatively, there might be a button on the back of your motherboard in order to do it. But this can help, especially if there are improvements to system stability and other things that so may be worth considering. Blue screen errors can also be caused by your graphics drivers. So I'd recommend downloading DDU, which is Display Driver Uninstaller. You'd be surprised how often there can be conflicts or other things with your graphics card drivers that are causing issues. DDU can help you remove all traces of your graphics card driver both NVIDIA, AMD and Intel, and any older drivers that are on your system that haven't been wiped properly by a latest update. 
So you can run this in Windows safe mode to get the best results out of it. And essentially what you need to do is just select from the drop down what you want to uninstall. So in this case, NVIDIA drivers, and then you do clean and restart. Now, before you do that, I recommend downloading the latest drivers from the relevant place. So in this case, NVIDIA's website, we're downloading the latest drivers for my graphics card. You go through there and download, make sure it's in your downloads folder. Because obviously once DDU runs, you're not going to have any GPU drivers on your system. So when you get back to Windows, it might be a bit janky and then you'll need to run the new drivers in order to get it looking good again and getting your system set up properly. In order to make the most out of DDU, you need to boot into safe mode. So to do that, press and hold the shift key on your keyboard, click on the power button on Windows and then click restart. And keep that shift key held down until you see the BIOS booting up. And then you should see a symbol that says please wait or something similar. You may have to wait a little bit longer than you normally would. We're then going into another screen where you need to click on troubleshoot and then advanced options and then startup settings. Once you've done that, you'll then have to restart again. You'll see that enable safe mode is one of the options lifted here, though. And you wait a little while and then it will reboot and it will take you back to this screen where you then need to select number four, enable safe mode. Safe mode can be used for a lot of the other fixes in this video. If you're finding that they're not working and you're still blue screening it, safe mode will make sure that the things are very thorough during the testing process. Now DDU will wipe the system off in terms of the drivers and help clean out any errors. So if there are any problems with drivers from your GPU causing the blue screens, it'll hopefully fix the issue. So it'll wipe all the traces off and then you've got to go about reinstalling the latest driver. So this can be a good way of doing it. So run the installer for NVIDIA, for example, click on NVIDIA graphics driver, click through there, and then I tend to choose custom settings, perform clean install, and just go about installing those drivers. If all else fails, there's a couple of other things you can try, one of which is typing get help in the start menu. That will then open up a start menu troubleshooter and you can then type blue screen troubleshooter into that. This will then talk you through various different steps. Now, I've honestly found this not very helpful because it gives you some pretty broad ones like have you installed a specific update or driver on your PC? No, I haven't. Have you recently added new hardware? No. And then it will just tell you to check Windows updates, which obviously we've already done. Now, you might find if you go through these steps, it might give you a bit more of a useful result than there. The other thing that you can do is you can press the Windows Start button and then type Event Viewer. Open up the Event Viewer and that should then show you a summary that you'll see here where you'll get to see critical error warning and other. Now you'll see in the last seven days I've had four critical errors. You can actually double click on that and then find out more about them and when they happened. So this might actually give you some clues as to your blue screen error. Mine isn't very helpful because it's basically a kernel power issue which says the system has rebooted without cleanly shutting down first, which is essentially the blue screen. This error could be caused by the system stopped responding crashed or lost power unexpectedly. In this case, it blue screened. So this isn't particularly helpful for me, but you might find that your error messages might be a bit more useful and that's one way to see them. So essentially, whenever a blue screen happens, the error is recorded in the event viewer. So you can at least get that if you didn't initially see what the error message was. And this might help you solve your problem. Alternatively, hit the start button and type run and then use the run command. And what we're going to do here is to open up another tool which will give you the performance metrics of your system. So type in this command in the run box and that will then open up the reliability monitor which gives you a breakdown over the days of any problems in your system. You can then click into each of them and get some more information on there with view technical details or find out more. You'll obviously see the critical events which is where you've had a blue screen or the machine's been powered off incorrectly marked with a red cross. If you click on each of those, you should then be able to get some more information. Now again, mine wasn't particularly useful, but you might find there are some clues in there about what has been problem in your system and what's caused the issue. There's also memory dumps and other files that you can reference in here as well. So this might help too. Hopefully you found some useful summaries of the different things that you can try to do with blue screens here. I hope that you managed to get it sorted out. If you do, consider dropping me a comment down below to let me know if it was useful. Thanks very much for watching. 
You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend, you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.